also revealed that the vast majority of black audiences are concerned about the lack of black owned media and are more likely to listen to talk radio that focuses on issues that impact the black community. For some reason, the other talk stations haven't quite figured that out. If you think about KFI, well, KFI only has like a 3% black listenership. 3%. There's a good 97% out there to support a station like KBLA. At KBLA Talk 1580, we've got you. We're black. We're black. We're black. We just trying to close up the wealth gap and get to this generation of wealth and bed that. We gon' left off like a dead type. Time to tune in, not just thinking real tight. Right here is everything you need. If this ain't gonna get rich quick, man. You're on a kind of man. This way ahead of the crypto curve. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Ahead of the Crypto Curve, where we are creating Satoshi Millionaires, one family at a time, one day at a time, one Bitcoin at a time, one Satoshi at a time, and ladies and gentlemen, that means you. I am your host, Naja Roberts, and it is my mission in life to lead my people out of financial slavery. I don't just do this show to change the way you think about money, but to make you change the way that you look at money and everything else around you because it absolutely matters today is tuesday april 25th 2023 and what a great day it is with so much stuff to talk about but before we get into our show today i want to say happy birthday to cryptopian viola edwards edwina armstrong sonia lewis and adrian boyd Today, I hope that your day is filled with all the love, joy, peace, and happiness you deserve on this day, which is your birthday. And if you're out there and you'd like to get a shout out on your birthday, please feel free to send me a text message to 424-317-7373. Again, 424-317-7373. And ladies and gentlemen, In this cryptocurrency space, there are so many things going on. We today are going to talk about Web3 because a couple of people were asking what Web3 is and how it actually ties into the cryptocurrency space. And so we're going to make sure that you're understanding those things. Uh, But there are so many things that are going on. You know, I have been talking to you all really about this four-legged stool that I have envisioned or as I have been practicing as an ex-financial advisor while I was a financial advisor, really trying to put together intricate pieces to make sure that each and every person in our community is covered holistically and not having all our eggs in one basket. And I see so many opportunities that are coming forward just because of inflation, uh, just a lot of the things that are happening in the market. And You know, there are opportunities all over the place. Money is changing hands all over the place. Money is abundant. And one of the confirmations or affirmations that I say every day that money flows easy and frequently. And you've got to continue to understand that that is so. And as we move into this transfer of wealth, ladies and gentlemen, there are so many things and all the things that I'm going to be talking about, including Web3 that we can take advantage of because of technology. And so when we come forward, we're gonna have this conversation about what Web3 is, how it relates to or actually benefits the black and brown community, and then how it relates to cryptocurrency. And then we're gonna have some other conversations because there is a lot going on in this space around the cryptocurrencies and around the exchanges and a whole lot more to talk about. When we come forward, this is KBLA Talk 1580. 
So it's got a little echo, but you know, that's what we gotta go when it's all good. All righty. Well, we are, we live and we're just doing, we're going to do what we do today and then tomorrow we'll fix it. We, we, we'll we fix it. I'm going to drive back today. Okay. Okay, I got you. All right. Thank y'all for tuning in. As you can see, we are dealing with a little bit of, you know, it's always something, but shalom to you too, Q. Appreciate each and every one of you for being on, being on. Hope your day is well. The sun is out. We're enjoying all of the fruits of what is going on in this space. But we got a lot to talk about. That's for sure. See behind the scenes today. <laughs> Hear what's going on on the radio. Welcome forward. Welcome forward. So as we talk about Web3, I want to make sure that you all know that as different technologies roll out, there always seems to be hype around something. So you had hype around, of course, blockchain. Everybody was adding the word blockchain to the name of their business. Then you had hype of NFTs. And everywhere you look, everybody was trying to do NFTs. NBA top shops, like all sorts of people start jumping into the, the NFT space. And Web3 is another buzzword that has been flying around everywhere. So we've had a lot of people asking, Naja, what is Web3? And Web3 or semantic web, some people call it semantic web, is really just the new concept of the world wide web. So yes, you have the internet. The internet came along and just really simply put, it gave companies the ability to actually grab your information, grab your content, and they monetize off of all of those users. The benefits went to the actual companies. Well, World Wide Web really took advantage of everybody because the internet was new. As we look into Web 3, it instead benefits the users who actually make the content instead of the platforms where the content is actually published. It actually promotes what we've been talking about, which is decentralization and more decentralized networks based on this thing we've been talking about called blockchain technology. It really tackles in some ways the ownership and the data issues that we've been seeing, which have been some of the main drawbacks of the internet. And so let's just talk about it for a minute. Again, it is a hype term. Everybody's talking about Web3 this, Web3 that, Web3 is just floating around in everybody's circle these days. But 
as it is the case, uh, there are many, many, many innovations that are coming about in Web3. It's actually giving the creator some sort of economic upside and it's allowing individuals to utilize different investing platforms and it's allowing black and brown creators specifically to do a lot better in web three with their different projects because they own and are able to monetize a little bit more than they were when there was just the you know when the internet was around so what you need to know is that web three is a creator's economy which some believe could soon be driven by blockchain enabled internet which it's sort of kind of taking off. There's a lot of work to be done and there's a different environment where people are creating these platforms and allowing people to stay anonymous, but also uh, monetize without it going through a centralized party, even though, you know, the, the platform is centralized. Somebody actually owns it and creates it. So we're living at an intersection, ladies and gentlemen, where two generational changes are happening at once. One is in the technology space and the evolution of the internet that's coming. But also, if you think about it for, for things like uh, the, the athletes with this new NIL rule, the name, image, and likeness, the ability for athletes to actually earn money as students is a big deal. And so that is those are the types of things that Web3 is bringing about. So Web3 creators, we're seeing a lot more equity in different platforms that we're getting involved with, like Instagram and YouTube and TikTok. Um, we're seeing though, however, in Web3, because a lot of people were asking if they should get involved, we're still seeing a racial pay gap. And that pay gap is really blaring. So black and brown content creators are more likely to get, unfortunately, about $27,000 annually. So as we talk about entrepreneurs that have started quitting their jobs to become these, what they call micro influencers in Web3, they're only making about $27,000 annually on average, while our white counterparts are making about $100,000 annually. That is a glaring racial pay gap. And so it's still existing, even though we are really doing our best to really get into Web3 and make things happen. And so I was really trying to look at why that's so. And it still has to do with the algorithms of the sites. It still has to do with if they even show your content uh, based on what they feel people need to be seeing. And so when you're talking about a financial upside in this Web3, I don't really see us as the black and brown community making the types of money that we should be making in this space. And so as we look into uh, our black, you know, black culture is everywhere, but we're still in this Web3 space, in my opinion, not getting compensated correctly for what we're actually bring, bringing to the table. And Web3 creator economy was supposed to change those things for black and brown people. It was supposed to give us more ownership and it was supposed to help us lead into more financial compensation. And so what's next? What do I see next happening in the Web3 space that we as black, the black and brown community can actually take advantage of? And one of them is tokenization. Tokenization of what? Tokenization of properties. That is where there are different shares of properties through the tokens, which is cryptocurrency, um, non-fungible tokens, where uh, you know somebody may have $100, but somebody may have a million dollars, or somebody may have $100,000, and they can all invest in that property equally based on the fact that they have these tokens. And that is what Web3 is going to do. There's also something called a decentralized autonomous organization. They are called DAOs. And the, there are all other blockchain use cases 
that are just the start for Web3 content and creation. And I know that seems like a lot or it says a lot and I try to break it down to be as simple as I could. But for black creators, it's a chance to actually shift the wealth narrative in our favor. And so um, as we continue, as we continue to learn about creating and doing different things in this micro economy, I really feel like we're going to have an opportunity to bring in another stream of income that we didn't have before. And uh, as it relates to how it actually ties into cryptocurrency, the, the reason or how it is, it, because it's like an umbrella term, it's used to refer to a set of upcoming technologies. And cryptocurrency has become one of the major use cases for Web3 technology. So people are trading for goods and services inside of the internet, inside of these platforms. In fact, many people credit cryptocurrency for actually being what made Web3 popular in a new wave of these blockchain-based applications called D-apps decentralized apps are what they're called. And so cryptocurrency works by allowing users to securely store and transfer value across the network using cryptographic protocols, consensus mechanisms. And there's this thing in the cryptocurrency space where there, it is called proof of work or proof of stake. Some of you may know that proof of work being Bitcoin, Proof of stake is some of the other cryptocurrencies out there where you are actually able to earn while you stake your coin, meaning someone is holding it and they're giving you dividends, sort of, kind of, uh, for your cryptocurrency. As the population, uh, popularity of cryptocurrency grows over time, more and, pe more and more people are turning to Web3 technologies in order to create their own custom tokens or coins. Now, people have come to me many times asking me if I wanted to start my own coin. And initially I did. And we even uh, got a coin created called the plug coin at one time. And I was going to sell my plug coin for, for goods and services. And we really started looking at whether or not we should get involved in that because we risked being in trouble for selling a security. And so we decided, of course, to opt out of it. But the more and more I watched Tavanya Evans, some of you know her, she has Guap coin, and that coin was designed to be uh, for us to recycle black dollars. I realized that it wasn't as easy as people were saying that it was. And the potential for Web3 technology to come along <coughs> was um and the innovation of the applications was more difficult than i actually thought and when i realized that having a decentralized network uh without relying on third-party services was kind of almost difficult it really wasn't as decentralized as people were saying and that's when i really started digging to find out that a lot of these coin owners and a lot of these companies that were saying that they were decentralized were actually not decentralized and could get shut down immediately. They could disappear with your money immediately. There were so many different things that I saw on Web3 that I needed to be cautious about. And so although Web3 is a very important technological revolution, there are numerous implications for future of uh, cryptocurrency and beyond but you really need to be careful again in this space without knowing what the actual origin of these companies are, if they're going to be left standing in two to three years. And again, I say it all the time, we do not have money to lose. So if you are in investing in Web3 technology, just make sure you do your due diligence because that's some of the questioning where people are asking what they should get involved in in Web3. I am going to say that I personally am not looking into Web3 like that because I really feel like we've got to be in control of everything moving forward. We've got to know exactly what is taking place where your funds are, where you can get your your hands on it. So the digital assets, 
The only digital assets I'm going to hold are those that I can control. So I'm not trying to stake my coin. I'm trying not trying to make interest or, or get any additional gains other than what the value of the coin is because we cannot rely on third party services to really be there when we need it. And it's to me, it's almost like having term insurance at some point. Whatever you're investing in in Web3 has the possibility of terming out before you actually need it. And that's what happens when you have term insurance. You're paying on it, you're paying on it, you're paying on it. And then uh, that you're still alive and that term insurance falls away and then you pass away and then you don't have it when you need it. And I really feel like a lot of things that we're getting invested in right now, we're going to be paying on it. We're going to be investing in it and investing in it. And those terms of whatever terms and conditions you sign are going to fall away. And when you need it the most in retirement, you're not going to have it. And so as it relates to Web3, me personally, again, not providing any financial advice, I'm stepping back. I'm paying attention. I'm watching it. I understand that it's important to remain up to date on the latest developments in this field so that possibly I can take advantage of some of these new opportunities. But I am being very, very cautious because ultimately it is up to um, I'm going to be very cautious because and, and if you want to get involved, ultimately it's up to you as an individual to decide whether or not you're comfortable using these emerging technologies or investing in these emerging technologies in Web3. I will say this because a lot of people are asking about buying property in these different platforms like Decentraland and places like that. Um, I will tell you that it's a real good hustle because you might buy my property. You might buy my brick and mortar cryptocurrency exchange inside of the computer, which many people have on different platforms. They've actually bought my personal property. Like I own the personal property in the present, but they have bought my person, my property inside of Decentraland. They bought my property inside of Sandbox. And then they try to call me and have me buy it back from them because they bought it already in these platforms. And I just outright told them I'm not interested in owning my property inside of those platforms because it's not in op inter interoperable. So you get inside of one metaverse and that's what's called the metaverse. But again, I think it's a hustle, but that's part of Web3. That's people that are entrepreneurs thinking of how they can make money in that space and capitalize off of people who have not taken advantage of buying their own property. So you could have somebody actually call you and tell you that they bought your house in the metaverse, but it really doesn't matter. It's nothing that you need to be alarmed about or anything like that, because who's to say if Decentraland is even going to be around in the next year or so, and they spent six or $7,000 on a piece of property that doesn't uh, mean a hill of beans to the people in Sandbox because it's the same property, but it's a different platform and the two platforms don't talk together. But again, this is Web3 technology, but some of us are actually taking a chance and purchasing that property. I am not one of those. So I want to make sure that I'm clear. And again, it's not that you can't, but I don't want to be the one on the short end of the stick having paid for a property that doesn't matter in five to 10 years. And so as we look at hard assets, I'm game for that property. But as it, as it relates to Web3 property, I'm not buying into that one right now. So uh, when we come forward, well, we got a couple of more minutes. So just to kind of wrap up that understanding that all of the Web3 uh, technology and what it has to offer really involves risks because in my opinion, it is the wild, wild west still. You can make some smart investments, uh, but you need to look at this technology and make those investments with confidence because with confidence, we just don't have any uh, money to lose. And there's not enough research out there, in my opinion, to really determine if um, 
that it that you're going to be successful and i also want to say this there are no experts in web three ladies and gentlemen things are changing so much and so when i see people paying people to teach them about web three you can learn about it but there are no experts there's no degrees everybody has a new definition of what web three means to them so i would just say Again, this is another area in the cryptocurrency space, in the Web3 space that you need to err against caution. You just need to have caution. Uh, you can be successful in the future, uh, but really, really pay attention to that. So when we come forward after new sports and traffic, ladies and gentlemen, we'll continue the conversation. We have a whole lot to talk about in the crypto space. This is KBLA Talk 1580. All right, we're going to just listen to commercials today, so y'all just hang in there. Thank you for rocking with us today. I'm Julius Swipe. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. Montana lawmakers are bracing for more protests today involving the first openly transgender woman selected to the legislature. This after Missoula Democrat Zoe Zephyr said this to Republicans voting for a bill to ban gender affirming care for minors. I hope the next time there's an invocation, when you bow your heads in prayer, you see the blood on your hands. The Montana House Speaker labeled it hateful rhetoric and is refusing to let Zephyr speak on the floor until she apologizes. In time, the World Health Organization is warning of a biological risk after a group in Sudan occupied a public health laboratory in the capital, Khartoum. And production of the electric Chevrolet Bolt and Bolt EV will end this year. General Motors says the company will transform the Orion assembly plant to build the all-electric Chevrolet Silverado EV and GMC Sierra EV next year. I'm Julius White on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network, and BINnews.com. Hi, I'm Kyle at Blindster.com, and I sell custom blinds designed for do-it-yourselfers. Unlike stock blinds offered at big box retailers, Blindster blinds are custom made for your windows and shipping is free. Don't hire an expensive pro. Do it yourself and save big at Blindster.com. If you're a late night snacker, listen up. Buffalo Wild Wings created a menu of late night food and drinks starting at $4. Ten till close. Full of tasty apps and ice cold beer to wash it all down. Limited time and participating locations. Offer days and times may vary. Drink responsibly. Void or prohibited. Tax and fees extra. This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. the birth of elimination tonight in the NBA playoffs. A lot of folks think their season is already over. The Clippers won't have Kawhi Leonard or Paul George for game five tonight in Phoenix. The Suns have a 3-1 lead in the best of seven. Thank you. Thank you. But the Clippers were caught off guard by Leonard's injury. Leonard will miss his third straight game tonight. <laughs> Been struggling with my voice. I got to tell one of my listeners, thank you. They sent me some whatever this is. It's a herbal formula. It has honey and low quad in it. I've been drinking it down. It is super thick, but I think it's, it's helping my throat a little bit. We got about three more minutes. If y'all want to grab some water or something, we're in our commercial break. Chase 
take on Crenshaw and Vernon for the In This Together Tour with female business owners, a day of empowerment, community panels, and best of all, tips on building business from marketing to capital. I'm here with Lisa Stevens, Senior Business Consultant with Chase for Business. Lisa, what's one tip you give to business owners here in the Crenshaw area? I love that you ask that question. I'm originally from Brooklyn, and I grew up in an area that's very similar to Crenshaw. So this is near and dear to my heart. And if I only leave a business owner with one key one, I would tell the business owner to identify their why. And I think that is so important because your why is going to be that strength on those days where you feel like you're struggling. Your why is going to be that stepping stone. Those things that you want to give up, your why is going to be the reason that you get back up. And how would you advise business owners looking to acquire capital? Who do they need to know before stepping inside the branch to ask for funding? So three things. I, I do want to share this when it comes to the power of capital and just have finding those resources. Understand that capital is a three part of a business, right? It's not always about the monetary piece, but if you first put that intellectual, right, what do I need to know? That social, what do I need to know? That will help you to, to then package for that monetary piece. So no matter who your banking is, you should know your banker. Never walk into a bank in your transaction only. It's just like Lisa to drop gems. I'm Ayesha Cairo in the community for KBLA with J.P. Morgan Chase. All right, welcome forward, welcome forward. So in this cryptocurrency space, we have some things that are going on with Coinbase. As you all know, um, someone from the SEC told some of the staff at Coinbase that they were uh, intending on recommending enforcement actions against the company. And so Coinbase went ahead and got proactive. And so Coinbase has filed a petition for rulemaking with the SEC. They did that last year as well. And the SEC did not answer. So because the SEC did not respond publicly to that petition, Coinbase is filing what they're calling a legal challenge. Coinbase chief legal officer, uh, Mr. Paul Gruel, said in a blog post that Coinbase and other cryptocurrencies are facing potential regulatory enforcement actions from the SEC. And even though the SEC has not given us directives, the SEC believes that the law applies to all of our businesses, meaning those people in the cryptocurrency space. And so this petition will be filed in the United States Courts of Appeals for the Third Circuit. Now, I don't know what that means for those of you that hold your cryptocurrency on uh, Coinbase. I don't know if the SEC goes after them again or anything like that. If you're going to be in, um, in any jeopardy of losing your cryptocurrency, if they're having to shut down, and that may be why there's a little bit of rumor that they're talking about leaving the United States. But we know that the cryptocurrency largely, the cryptocurrency industry largely, believes that um, that it operates in a regulatory gray area, not governed by the existing U.S. securities laws. And we, we're feeling like that because they've not given any clear cut um, reason or, or notification as to how we need to be actually moving with new legislation we know that it's needed but because they haven't given us anything, but then they come back and just ding us in this space. And so Coinbase is being proactive. They're going after the SEC. And so we're going to see what happens with that. SEC may get pretty mad at them, um, but they are right now in uh, dealing with Homeland Security and things of that sort. So I think it, they may be protected a little bit, but we'll also see what happens because Coinbase is submitting a petition for rulemaking around the cryptocurrency laws. And so let's just see what happens and I'll keep you all posted, but you know, if it's not your keys, it's not your coin. So if you're on Coinbase cracking any of those exchanges, you should be still wanting to move your cryptocurrency into your own wallet. Now let's look at the cryptocurrency update for the day. Bitcoin right now is at $28,002. It's up 
1.5% in the last hour. In the last 24 hours, it's up 2.19%. In the last seven days, it's down a whopping 7.46%. As you look at Ethereum, it's following the same pattern and the same trend. It's up to $1,862 in the last hour, 1.4%. In the last 24 hours, 1.39%. And in the last seven days, it is down a whopping 10.87%. Now, a lot of you, I got some couple of pieces of fan mail and, you know, people were saying, ah, Ethereum is going to do better. It's going to outperform Bitcoin. And I keep telling you every time I look at Vitalik Buterin and what, uh, you know, not, not judging the guy by his character, but just what I see. I don't know if I want to leave my retirement funds in his hand. So I'm not saying that uh, Ethereum is going to do um, way better than Bitcoin at all. But, you know, some people tend to think so. And then again, XRP and all these other cryptocurrencies, they're doing the same thing. They're green in the first two columns and red in the other one. And a lot of these cryptocurrencies, as I scroll down, are red all the way across. And I just want to say thank you to one of my listeners who did not want to be named. They sent me a herbal dietary uh, honey and loquat serum. It's a it's a Chinese uh, herbal formula. I just want to say thank you. I appreciate that you're thinking about me and my voice and uh, just kind of rocking with me and sending me stuff to help me on this journey as I am dealing with just the pollen and the different things in the area. I just love you all. I appreciate you so much. And I just wanted to say thank you, even though you don't want me to say your name on the air. I just appreciate you. And so uh, that's our market update. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a couple of things that are happening that are not necessarily tied to the cryptocurrency space, but it is tied to that four-legged stool that I was talking about. So remember, and I'm going to continuously say it so you get it in your head, how you need to be diversified. I'm not a financial advisor, not providing any financial advice, but I am observing what is happening in our country and out of our country and understanding that we need to be diversified. And any financial advisor is going to tell you that anyway. But in the area of hard assets, we've been talking about gold and silver. We've been talking about actual real estate. Well, some things are changing in the next couple of days that some of you may not know about. And I want you to do your own research, do your own due diligence, find out how this new law um, that is coming about is going to affect you. And so Biden raises the cost for home buyers with good credit to help risky borrowers. So a couple of things with that, first and foremost. Um, remember I told you all that I personally feel, this is not a fact, but I personally feel like there is an attack on the black and brown community as it relates to everybody being brainwashed to feel as though we are taking something from them. Um, and in more ways than one, this is just another step from some of the social media platforms that I get on and sit in to try to really figure out how they are feeding this narrative to different communities about, uh, you know, the, them making people feel like black and brown people are getting some sort of privilege that they're not getting. And it's happening again around this home buying thing. And so home buyers with good credit scores will soon be faced with higher mortgage fees. And the mortgage fees look like about $60 a month or something like that. It's not a real big deal, but how some of these platforms are putting it out there, how some of these news arms are putting it out there, they're making it look like so much is being given to us, black and brown individuals who are, and they haven't said it this way, but they're insinuating that we have lower credit scores. And I can give you some statistics to talk about uh, just really what that looks like by way of what our credit scores 
are supposed to be. And I'll just say this right now. They're putting it out there that the average white community has a credit score of about 727 compared to a credit score of 667 in the Hispanic community. And in the black community, they're saying that our credit scores are right around 627. And so again, white community 727, uh, Hispanics 667 and blacks 627. So they put that out there so that individuals know that starting May 1st, if their mortgage bankers, um, if the mortgage, if their mortgage goes up uh, through the FHA and all of these other things, that additional money is being siphoned from them supposedly and given to us. That's the narrative that's being played out. But it is there are going to be some changes that happen on May first, and it may be, of course, to our advantage. And I'm going to share with you how we can take advantage of those things. That's why we've been working so hard to make sure that we're in the right place at the right time to get the windfall of what is about to happen in the real estate market. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited about it. But just watching this narrative being pushed out, I'm a little bit worried about, you know, how they're going to take it out on us. We're already getting low appraisals and things of that sort. But um, you know, just stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. There are some things that are going to happen, and I'm going to share them with you so you know about them. But May 1st, uh, Biden will raise the cost for home buyers that have good credit. And so um, this may be one of those times you want to have less than great credit to be able to take advantage of some of the programs that are about to roll out. But again, I'll keep you posted when we come forward. This is KBLA Talk 1580. Welcome forward. Welcome forward. We're getting a lot of articles that are coming out that are stating that the crypto winter is over. People are expecting Bitcoin to do well moving forward, just based on the charts. I don't get into trading uh, on the show like that, but there is a Bollinger Band that people are saying 
that it looks like Bitcoin is going to hit 20,000 again. And they're looking for it by the end of the 2024 to be $100,000 per coin. And that is why, or one of the reasons why we are stacking our Satoshis. And it just looks like Bitcoin could very well jump up. And remember in 2024, which we're not far from, uh, Bitcoin will be doing a halving, which means the amount of coins that are being created every 10 minutes right now is going to get cut in half. Right now it's 6.25 coins. In 2024, it's going to drop down to half of that, which is three point uh, whatever it is. And so with that being said, it's going to cause some scarcity. It is going to cause uh, everybody who is interested in getting involved in cryptocurrency uh, to start taking a look at it because it's going to be scarcer and scarcer. Some people are utilizing it, but some people are using it as a store of value. So again, we want to make sure that you are aware um, that now is a good time, in my opinion, for us to continue to dollar cost average. Figure out what you can afford to lose every month and you put that away to the side. I would say go half of that. So if you say, you know what, I can afford to lose $100 a month, I would say just go 50% of that, which is $50. And then every month you just do $50 worth of Bitcoin. Again, you can get it on Cash App. You can get it on Coinbase, Binance. Wherever you can get access to Bitcoin, get access to Bitcoin, but do not leave it on that platform. It is to your advantage to always be in control of your Bitcoin because you don't know what's going to happen or how it's going to move or any of that. You don't know if, if the uh, exchange is going away or if an employee decides to go rogue that day. But a lot of people feel as if the crypto winter is over. So we may never see 15,000 or 14,000 again. Uh, but we do right now see where it is at. Is at about 27. And um, it's really uh, up to us to really pay attention to the stabilization of Bitcoin as it grows older in technology, as it grows older in people's mindset or people's ability to utilize it, or company's ability to allow us to transact with it, all of those things are going to come into play. And I don't feel like any uh, further Federal Reserve easing of monetary tightening or any of those things are going to make Bitcoin uh, go away or just not be here. We're going to need it because there's so many things that are at, in play right now where we are going to be able to maintain this digital currency and allow it to be an asset that we are diversing, diversifying into in times of economic stress or distress. And so as theory goes, Bitcoin has this limited supply. And if you just own one, ladies and gentlemen, when I first heard somebody say, I own one Bitcoin, it was funny to me that they own one Bitcoin. I think at that time it was around $3,200. I was like, just one? And they're trying to teach us and they only hold just one? But now that I understand what that means, I'm not laughing at that anymore. If you have one Bitcoin, you have 100 million Satoshis. And so that's really critically important to understand. And as inflation grows and as different things uh, happen, you just really want to be holding on to one of those little pieces of that pie. And that is Satoshis, 100 million Satoshis equals one entire Bitcoin. So ladies and gentlemen, when we come forward, we're going to talk about what's going on in the crypto space today, these days. And we are going to ensure um, that you also know about some of the classes that are coming up where you can learn a little bit more. This is KBLA Talk 1580.
The LA Black Workers Center takes a comprehensive approach to addressing the black jobs crisis. Their programs promote access to quality jobs, racial equity in hiring and retention, discrimination-free job sites. Do they prepare black workers for employment and high-wage, career-track jobs? The Black Workers Center supports workers who need help protecting their rights on the job. They give workers access to quality jobs and remove systemic barriers to employment. To sign up for free career readiness training, get involved in organizing around anti-discrimination, learn about union apprenticeship programs, or sign on to a trade registry, please visit www.lablackworkerscenter.org. That's lablackworkerscenter.org. Together, we can beat the black jobs crisis. This is the community call to action from KBLA Talk 58. I'm Kareem Abdul Jabbar. I learned about atrial fibrillation the hard way. My symptoms would come and go. Shortness of breath, fatigue. I kept going. Then I got so lightheaded, I couldn't. My doctor said I have aphid, so I'm about five times more likely to have a stroke. Other symptoms, irregular heartbeat, heart racing, chest pain can come and go. But the risk of stroke stays. If you have symptoms, tell a doctor. Visit NoTimeToWait.com. Sponsored by Bristol Myers Squibb and Fire. Find a righteous rage and don't be afraid to say what you see for KBLA Talk 15. All right. Welcome forward. Welcome forward. As you all know, we have consensus going on right now in Austin, Texas. It's one of the big Web3 cryptocurrency blockchain conferences. Again, it is called Consensus. And uh, if any of you are in the Austin, Texas area, you can go and attend there. This weekend, we have the Business Grind Out at Waves right here in Los Angeles on Crenshaw and Manchester. And you will see it. It's behind the gas station. It is a business grind out. It is absolutely free. There are some incredible individuals there that will be imparting information or for each and every one of you, if you're interested in starting a business, trying to learn how to actually structure a business, any of those things, uh, you want to learn about life insurance, if you want to learn about trust, if you want to learn about uh, anything that has to do with anything in money, you should be at the business grind out this weekend. Now, um, we also have a scheduled Ledger and Me 123 that is going to be happening in the month of May. That'll be coming up along with the Crypto Essentials. So for those of you that are new listeners and you want to learn the basics, what is cryptocurrency? What is Bitcoin? Or if you, if you have family members that need to know what those things are, please feel free to have them reach out to me at Ask Naja Roberts and I will get them the information for those courses so that they can get on those. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, we are really, really uh, taking things to another level. In May, it is our turn. I say it all the time. I've been saying it's our turn for two years since I started on tour. This year would have been the third year on tour. But when I started on tour, that was one of my mantras. It's our turn. It definitely is our turn. There's so many things to learn. We have got the goods for each and every one of you. And I am going to continue educating you on some of the things that you need to know about not just cryptocurrency, but everything in general. And there is something coming up called social credit score. Now, you just heard me say that President Biden is allowing your credit score to, to cause you to either pay more taxes or less taxes, acquire property or not acquire property to a certain extent. And so they're also working on social credit score. And so we're going to talk about social credit scores uh, tomorrow. That's going to be my topic. Now, that's something that um, I know a lot of you are not really, really aware of, but there is something called a social credit score, and it is going to be used in our country at some point. And so just know about it. When you know better, you do better. And so that's where we are with that. But ladies and gentlemen, we are making way for the D.L. Hughley show. And you all know that I thank each and every one of you for rocking with me on Ahead of the Crypto Curve, where we are creating Satoshi Millionaires, one family at a time, one day at a time, one Bitcoin at a time, 
one Satoshi at a time. And ladies and gentlemen, that means you. You're listening to Nadja Roberts on the head of the crypto curve. Please follow her on all social media platforms at Nadja Roberts, no underscores, no dots.